Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we will be performing some error handling in our application. Okay, so we will be talking a lot about results and optionals. So I hope you do know about them. Okay, so this is where we left off the last time. And here we can see that we have used unwrap a few times. So for example, in our DB statement, where we have connected to the database, we have used unwrap and also for uh, running the migrations. So the simple thing in this case would be to use an expect uh, instead of unwrap. So what this does is if there is a panic, it will throw this message. So in this case, we do want our application to stop if there is no database connection. So I'm using expect, uh, but there can be cases where we need our application to keep on going and to produce some certain type of results. Uh, we will take a look at that later. Okay, so to get certain results, we will have to use a struct. So let's create a struct called main error. And we'll give it a parameter called message. Now in a lot of cases, what we do is we create a single standard error uh, struct and we use it across the application. We do not need to do in this case. So I'll just use this in our main. So here we can do a result return type and uh, we can pass our uh, main error for error. Also, in most cases, we need a debug trait if we are creating a struct for handling errors. Okay, now with this return type, we can change the expect uh, to map error. So map error does. So what map error does is basically uh, take the error type which is coming and convert it into a different type of error. So in this case, we will be converting it into a main error because our uh, return type for error is main error. And after mapping the error, we put this question mark. Uh, this is similar to unwrap. If the result up to this point is okay, then it will continue the execution. But if it is an error, then it will directly return the uh, mapped error, which is the main error in our case. Now we can just copy this and replace the expect in the database connection statement as well. Now uh, we have covered most of these uh, errors. Let me just fix up the. Okay, now only the HTTP server is left. So in HTTP server at the end, we'll put a map error, uh, but we will not put the question mark because uh, we are returning this. So we basically want a result. So we won't put the question mark. Okay. So we have one more question mark after bind. Uh, we'll put in map error before that as well. Uh, so the question mark is doing its thing. Uh, it's checking for error and returning the error if it founds one. But before returning, we want the error to be mapped. Uh, so we'll put a map error. Now our uh, main function is ready with error handling. So let's just do a cargo run and uh, test whether these are working or not. So our application is running fine. Now let's uh, change something in our, let's say uh, in our dot env uh, and then we'll run it again. And here you can see we are getting an error. So our database does not exist because we changed the name of the database. So here the error is displayed to the user directly and the application stops here in a handler. Then we don't want our entire application to stop if there is an error in a single user's uh, HTTP request. Uh, so for that, we'll do something similar and it won't stop the application. Rather, it will just return a proper error response based on the error. Okay, next we have these constants which we are taking from our .env file and there can be cases where the .env file does not contain let's say the port or the address. So there is also a little bit of error handling in that. Okay, let's first just remove the port and try to run this. Uh, we are getting an error because it does not found uh, the port. Uh, we don't exactly want that. Uh, we want some basic default a port number or let's say localhost so that it does not just throw an error just runs with the default parameters 
So for that, we'll remove this unwrap and instead we'll use unwrap or. We can also use unwrap or else, but I'm using unwrap or. And inside, we will pass our uh, localhost. So this uh, basically tries to unwrap. And if the unwrap is successful, then great. But if it fails, then this just gives the default value which we have provided. We can do the same thing in our, uh, let's say, database URL and secret and port. Uh, there are few things in our database URL. So for first thing is uh, we don't really want our entire database URL to be present in our application hardcodedly. So in, in this case, we can use, let's say expect, uh, and just throw an error because if there is no database, we don't want any default database to be used. We want a proper database defined by the user. So in this case, I'm using expect, but in most cases we'll use uh, unwrap or okay. Next, uh, is our port. So in port, I have currently defined this unwrap here, unwrap or at the end. But this unwrap or is working for the parse statement. We don't want this to work for the parse. We want this to work for env var. So we'll replace uh, the unwrap which is before this. Uh, and at the end, we'll put an expect. So if there is no port number found, it will give a string as a port number. But if port number is found, but it cannot parse it, then that means that user hasn't provided the port number properly. So in that case, it will give an error. Okay, so let's go to our main and uh, just print out our port number and see uh, if the default port number is being used if we remove our port number from .env. So currently it's getting port 8080 because we have defined that in our .env. So let's remove this from our .env and run this again. Okay, now no error and we are getting port 5050. So a common thing that we deal with in error handling is traits. We deal with traits everywhere, but in error handling, it's necessary to have some traits. So for example, if you open up our API response, we have our response error trait, which we created for API response, which allows us to create a proper error response. Similarly, there can be cases where you might need to create a trait. So I'll give you an example how I do that. We'll just do an implementation, then the name of the trait that we want to add to our struct and then for, and finally the name of our struct. Okay. So this is giving us an error which is good because here we can get an option to implement the functions that we need. We can remove this one. Uh, this one is not necessary. Uh, it's still giving us an error because it's saying uh, this trait which we are creating the error trait needs another trait for display. So we'll create that trait for our main error. We'll do same thing uh, display for main error. Now again, we'll implement the functions. And in format, we'll just write something. We'll just write the error. So this is how we generally deal with traits. Uh, if certain traits are required, we create them for the particular struct. And in our main, we don't really need any traits. But in most cases, if you're dealing with error handling or in general, you will need to implement certain traits. So this was just an example of how to implement certain traits, which you might need to do in your application. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to our uh, final thing, which is handlers. Okay. We are in auth handler and at the top, we can see we have our return type of responder and we are using unwraps. Now we want to do the same thing, uh, which is to use a map error and then use a question mark. Uh, to handle the good side as well as the error side. Now, one thing we can do is remove this unwrap and then use is error, but that is not really efficient. We'll have to write some code and that's just not good. 
instead what we'll do is we'll change the return type to our result and both the results will be api response uh, because api response can handle error as well in our case uh, if you haven't Im implemented that trait you won't be able to do that okay uh, next we'll just do the map error just like always and we'll create an api response instead of main error in this case So if we have an error, we'll create an API response with 500 status code and uh, whatever error is there will be sent as a body. We'll put a question mark and you can see that uh, we are getting model uh, in user model and our error handling is just done. Uh, just one single line of code. We didn't have to create any if conditions. Our return is giving us an error because our return type is result. We'll have to wrap this in an okay. Uh, but that's all our register function is done next uh, let's move to our login function we have to do the same thing uh, map the error put a question mark uh, and uh, our user should be good uh, let's change the return type also a result api response api response now another great thing we don't have to do this manual check we are doing this manually here we are returning 401 if we don't find any user uh, we can also wrap this inside an okay and the error will go and this will work fine but this is not ideal we are using a result so we don't really need to manually code this we can use an okay or so if the statement is okay or it's getting a model uh, it will return that but if it is not getting a model it will return whatever we pass. So in our case, we are passing an API response. So let's return 404 uh, user not found. Do not forget to put the question mark at the end. And this can uh, replace all that if code. Uh, let's change user data to user. Okay, our user is giving error. Probably we imported some something which has user. That's why it's saying to use some other name. Uh, let's just uh, replace this with user data. We'll do the same thing. We had an unwrap for our tokens. We'll replace it with map error. Put a question mark at the end and that's done and with this you can see that how efficient the error handling in rust is okay so this was probably the cause for that error for user it lets us move this we don't really need this uh, and with this our auth handler is ready with all error handling uh, now let's go to some other handlers our home handler we are not really using this handler but let's just uh, do some proper handling here as well. Now only one handler is left that is user handler, but it don't really have any function that needs some error handling. Uh, let's go to our env put back our port number run our application and see uh, whether the error handling in our user handler or in our auth handler is working properly or not so currently i'm sending a proper uh, username and password so it is logging in and giving us a token but what happens if we put a wrong username then it's giving us user not found which we defined using map error so this means our error handling is working perfectly so that's all for this video hope you learned something and enjoy this video please give a thumbs up if you did and do consider subscribing